Well, I think, you know, um, the words that I use a lot of times is being retail ready. Okay. So, so a lot of times uh, in, in having, having, you know, to use an analogy or use a, a, a phrase here, getting the cart before the horse, um, you know, you have to think about, I, I, we talked a little bit about, you know, how are you going to reorder the product, but being retail ready means, you know, a lot, we have a lot of going on here around us, which we call farmer's markets. Yeah. So maybe you make something or I make something and you go to the farmer's market and you sell. Um, and, and that's, that's one environment, right? Mm -hmm. That's completely different from being retail ready. Retail ready means you have finished packaging, you have nutritional packs, you have means of distribution, you have a promotional strategy, you have all those things ready to go before you come to a buyer to say, okay, I'm here to sell this product. How do, how do, you know, how do we do this? And I think so many times emerging brands think that um, the more stores they can get into, uh, the better it's going to be. And that's not necessarily the case because, right. um, you know, you could get in one store and if that's, if you build that relationship, going back to the relationship piece, if you build that relationship and you demo and you have a good promotional schedule and uh, you work really hard at that one store, you might have better results at that one store than if you're in 10 stores based on your relationship and based on your efforts. So my, my advice to an emerging brand would be to be very strategic about who you partner with mm -hmm. and build that relationship one partner at a time before trying to get it in 100 doors or 100 stores. I think it's just important to take care of each, each individual partner before you try and grow too fast. Uh, good morning, viewers. Uh, uh, today we have with us uh, Mr. Wade Yeni from the United States. Uh, Wade currently is the director of grocery for Jimbo's, the premier the premier natural food stores in and around uh, San Diego, California. Prior to Jimbo's, uh, Wade spent 20 years with Bullers Group in Ohio, leaving there as the senior director of Center Store, and also spent time with Roses Group out of Louisiana leaving there at the Director of Non-Foods, Health and Beauty and General Merchandise and Confections. Wade is well known throughout the CPG world for his ability to grow brands and relationships as well, as, in, in, uh, as well as his involvement with the CPG LinkedIn community. So uh, Wade, I mean, uh, you have spent a lot of time in the retail industry for more than two decades now. So what are those uh, key questions which every retailer asks when considering uh, a product at their stores? Yeah, so I would say, uh, I would say I'm going to ask, uh, you know, what other stores you're in. Sure. I'm going to want to know what your suggested retail price is, what, you know, uh, who you think your competition is, uh, what, what differentiates you in the category, you know, how are you different than the product selection I already have, mm -hmm. um, how you intend on promoting the product, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, demos, if you're going to use social media, if you're going to use influencers, if, you know, what, what the promotional plan looks like as far as getting the product off the shelf. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to know how I'm going to get the product, what distributors you're using. Um, and uh, really, really, that's the primary ones I would say to start with. Awesome. Awesome. So, I mean, of course, uh, it is yeah, what we have observed is uh, since now in the offline retail, uh, it is important to have the right product packaging as well for the customers. So what should be the key highlights for a, for a growing brand or a new brand uh, to be considered for uh, having a right packaging? So we're, we're big on sustainability. Uh, we, want, we want to see is the smallest amount of packaging and the most sustainable packaging as we can see. For example, uh, we don't have any plastic water in our stores. Uh, we mm -hmm. have all glass cans or alternative wow. packaging. So we, that happened uh, fully this year. Uh, we had one store that had been there previously, but we implemented it across all of our stores this year. Um, beyond that, I think from a branding standpoint, I think um, you just want to be able to tell your story as cleanly and uh, as clearly as possible. So when I pick up your product and I look at it, I can tell what you are, what the attributes are. Is it organic? Is it non-GMO? Uh, what's the nutritional value, just very clean, very concise, and just, just so it makes sense. And I also think um, from a packaging standpoint, you want to be able to clearly stand out on the shelf. 
You know, uh, you, right. you don't want to look exactly like the brand that you're up against. You want to be able to see, you know, something that catches the eye and pops uh, when you look at it visually. Sure. So, of course, wait, I mean, uh, it's said in, in a general practice that uh, it takes, let's say, for a, for a walk-in customer who is walking down the aisle, uh, let's say a person gets only three to four seconds to identify if it is the right product for the consumer or not. So, I mean, what is your take on that and what are those, let's say, uh, highlighting features or attractive features which a brand can really have on the packaging? I, I don't disagree with that. I think it's probably, it's probably right. You know, customers are, you know, going up and down the aisles. They're looking at the categories they want to, uh, they want to buy in. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of times it's, it's picking up a familiar brand that they already know. I think uh, sometimes it's it's more there might be something that catches their eye. You know, maybe it's a color, maybe it's a, a graphic or a picture on the package. Um, you know, obviously it's not in the brand's control as far as shelf placement. You know, you know everybody wants to be eye level when you look right. at the shelf. It wants to be here because everybody starts here, and then maybe they look up or maybe they look down. Yes. Um, but that's really not in the brand's control. I think that's that's you know mm. the retailer, you know the store level. Um, so I think the best thing the brand can do is, is again, to make sure, uh, you know, their packaging is telling that story of who they are, what they are, um, mm -hmm. and, and making sure that it's very visible uh, on what they have on the shelf. Sure, sure. Of course, since we are talking about packaging, so, I mean, one thing popped up on my mind is around uh, having, creating an impact on the consumer. So, I mean... Uh, does a consumer really, uh, I mean, does his or her decision really influence based on what the brand is really creating an impact on the society? I mean, does a consumer really uh, look for it? I think so. I think, um, you know, a lot of education that's involved with, with regards to consumers, especially here um, mm -hmm. in this market where I'm at in San Diego, I think you know, our, our customers are very health conscious, uh, you know, so they're looking for more health conscious brands. Um, they are interested in the stories, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in my background coming from the conventional side and, 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 and not in this affluent area where there's a lot of high income. Uh, I think that wasn't as prevalent as it is in this market. Um, this market, you know, because customers want to look for things that, that are doing good for uh, you know, sustainability. They want to look for things that are, have a good story and are giving back to the community. Um, that's, those are all very important things here, especially in this market. Sure, sure. So, uh, I mean, with your extensive experience in uh, procurement, what tips do you have for a growing brand, having a promising product portfolio, of course, and who wishes to now enter into the international market and especially the U.S.? So I, I think, um, you know, when I look at, you know, we've done a lot of business recently with brands out of Canada. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think one of the things they're doing very well is, that, you know, it's important to us, my stores, uh, is the organic piece. You know, there's a lot of good organic product uh, that's coming out of Canada. But I think, you know, to answer your question, I think the most important thing is to have a reliable distribution network. Um, you know, so uh, I tell this to people all the time, you know, it's, it's easy to put product on the shelf, you know, you could bring it to me, you know, in your hands and put and I could put it on my shelf. But the challenge is, how am I going to get it again when I need to reorder it? Right. And so I think the most important thing, as you look expanding, especially internationally is, um, you have to have that supply chain in mind as far as, okay, the delivery window, once it's on the shelf, you have to have that, that channel to backfill it so that whenever I need it again, you know, maybe I need it tomorrow or the next day, you have to have a constant, uh, constant supply uh, right. to keep the shelves full because from a retailer's perspective, the worst thing you can do is have an empty shelf. You know, that's, well, that's, the, that's the worst case for me is I, I get your product, it sells really well, but now I can't reorder it because it's out of stock or I'm waiting for a container to clear customs or yeah. something like that. So when you're talking international and trying to get product into the U.S., I think you really have to keep in mind that turnaround time to get product from point A to point Z and, and to be able to get it back in so that the stores can reorder it. So I think that would be probably the most important thing I'd advise. Right, right. Great. So uh, I have a personal question here. So, I mean, of course, uh, 
uh, I mean, if I were to ask you your two personal uh, long-term goals, so what would they be? Personal? Yeah. Um, geez, uh, I want to do the best. No, um, boy, that's a tough question. You threw you threw one at me. <laughs> um, I, I just, you know, I want to give back to the community. I want to um, share my experience and share my knowledge um, and help the community as a whole grow. I want to help brands. Um, I want to okay. help. Uh, I want to help uh, my my team, you know, grow and develop people, um, and just really uh, help push this industry forward. And at the end of the day, it's really about doing one thing: it's selling more stuff, right? Whether it's whether it's your product, his product, her product, my product, we all want it, we all want the same thing. You want it to sell it to me. I want it to sell it to somebody else. So I think that's you know that's something. But but really, the the short answer is I just I. I just want to give back to the people. Lovely, lovely. Really appreciate that. So, uh, coming down to my next uh, next question. Uh, so, I mean, how do retailers monitor, improve, and develop categories uh, per se through innovations and uh, maybe private labels? <clears throat> so, uh, I my philosophy: we don't do a lot of private label here because sure. you know we're small. We only have a few stores here. But uh, my philosophy in the past with private label has been. Um, you have to be the best in the category, right. you have to be the cheapest in the category, or you have to be both, which is pretty hard to do. It's hard to be the cheapest at retail and also be the best quality. Um, so I think, uh, you know, when you look at developing private label, I think you have, to, it has to make sense, um, you know, because at the end of the day, I'm going to put my name on that package, you know, Jimbo's. Uh, and so when somebody picks that up, it's one thing for them to pick up a brand um, and to have a mental picture of a brand and not be happy with a product. But if they pick up a product that has my company's name on it, it's essential that I'm giving them high quality and something that, uh, that I'm proud of and, and that I'm going to stand behind. And so to develop that, uh, you know, I think when you're talking about getting into a category or talking about expanding your private label, I think it's essential that you have that mindset that you want to be the best because you um, it's, it's about protecting your brand, you know, and right. you can do yourself a lot of harm getting into a category where you can't do a good job or you aren't the best and, and customers aren't happy with the end result. Uh, so as far as developing, that's, that's what I would say. I would say you just really want to make sure you're putting a good product out there um, and, and don't rush to get it on the shelf. I mean, make sure the product is something you're absolutely proud of before you ship that first case out and, and send it to a consumer. Right, right. So, I mean, great, of course, I'm uh, based on your uh, experience. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you have developed a lot of emerging brands there. So how important is it for a, for a young brand to love relations with the with the retail in terms of the team and the and the buyer and all the associates in the in the in the area so what is your take on that i think i think it's essential i mean relationships are what this business is all about um you know and i want to i want to do business with people um that that are that want to do business with me and that value my my stores my team my you know as as consumers and I think, um, you know, the longer you're in this business, the more you realize how important relationships are, uh, you know, and, and it's, it's about, um, again, I go back to what I said, as far as personal goes about, about that community aspect, you know, I, I, you know, in the past, a lot of what I did was competitive, you know, as far as looking at my competition and trying to keep myself competitively priced, lower mm -hmm. priced, you know, those kind of things now. Um, in this environment, in this channel, I think it's more about, uh, you know, looking and applauding the efforts of others. You know, I think, you know, looking what we're doing with the plastic water, you know, eliminating that in our stores um, and recognizing that. Uh, and I've had I've had peers in, in the business, you know, congratulate our achievement in, in making that happen. And I've congratulated peers on their achievements. Um, so I think I think it's really important that, um, you know, together you know, working together as a community, we can all do good things. And I think that's, right. that's something to take away. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, maybe a couple of tips, if you can give to young entrepreneurs who are uh, coming up with the products, which are, let's say, extremely competitive in the category. So what points should a, should a new age entrepreneur in the CPG thing uh, really take care of? <clears throat> 
Well, I think, you know, um, the words that I use a lot of times is being retail ready. Okay. So, so a lot of times uh, in, in having, having, you know, to use an analogy or use a, a, a phrase here, getting the cart before the horse, um, you know, you have to think about, I, I, we talked a little bit about, you know, how are you going to reorder the product, but being retail ready means, you know, a lot, we have a lot of going on here around us, which we call farmer's markets. Yeah. So maybe you make something or I make something and you go to the farmer's market and you sell. Um, and, and that's, that's one environment, right? Mm -hmm. That's completely different from being retail ready. Retail ready means you have finished packaging, you have nutritional facts, you have means of distribution, you have a promotional strategy, you have all those things ready to go before you come to a buyer to say, okay, I'm here to sell this product. How do, how do, you know, how do we do this? And I think so many times emerging brands think that um, the more stores they can get into, uh, the better it's going to be. And that's not necessarily the case because, right. um, you know, you could hey, get in one store and if that's, if you build that relationship, going back to the relationship piece, if you build that relationship and you demo and you have a good promotional schedule and uh, you work really hard at that one store, you might have better results at that one store than if you're in 10 stores based on your relationship and based on your efforts. So my, my advice to an emerging brand would be to be very strategic about who you partner with mm -hmm. and build that relationship one partner at a time before trying to get it in 100 doors or 100 stores. I think it's just important to take care of each, each individual partner before you try and grow too fast. Awesome. Uh, a very specific question around the values with which Jimbo's carry. So if you can uh, highlight maybe top three values which Jimbo's really uh, cater to. Which values we care, we look yeah. for? Yeah. Yeah. So um, we are, as I mentioned previously, uh, we, you know, with the Canadian products we've been bringing in, just very super focused on organic. Organic is our top priority. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, if, if you, we're looking for organic products. Um, and organic ingredients. Uh, so that's top of list. Our, our, our produce departments are 100% organic. Mm -hmm. Our bulk foods is 100% organic. And we push for any new item we bring in in the grocery categories, excuse me, to be, to be organic. Uh, mm -hmm. Secondary to that, uh, you know, is the non-GMO piece, which is a big sure. thing here in, in the U.S. Um, you know, so we look for items to be uh, non-GMO verified, which is a sure. process they go through to, to um, ensure that they are non-GMO. And the upcoming one that I would say um, we're looking at is regenerative agriculture, um, mm -hmm. you know, and the su right. sustainability aspect of the agricultural piece. And, and again, going back to that, the, the community and, and taking care of soil and things like that. So I would say those are probably the top three we're looking for right now. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, coming down to my last question for this session. So, I mean, uh, you have uh, had more than two decades of experience in the, in the CPG industry. So how do you foresee the changing food landscape of the U.S. market with the penetration of plant-based foods? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because uh, nearly every day or several times a day, uh, I see a new product that's plant-based. Um, and the bulk of what we're seeing right now is uh, in the beverage category. Um, we're seeing a lot in the, uh, beverage, uh, the instant beverage, you know, like, uh, waters and, and energy drinks and, uh, protein drinks and things of that nature. Um, but then also in the take home, like with milks, you know, we see flax milks, oat milks, chia milks, right. uh, you know, almond milks and so on and so forth. So it's going to be interesting to see how things develop because, you know, I know right now as we speak, there's a plant expo, uh, plant-based expo going on yes. in New York City um, yeah. with some some brands, and and so you're seeing some innovation in in frozen uh, with ice cream or gelatos and novelties, uh, burgers, uh, chicken, uh, seafood, and and so on and so forth. So I think the sky's the limit. I think the key is going to be, um, especially for what we would call like flexitarians or people that are just maybe right now they they aren't eating a plant-based diet, but maybe they're transitioning into it. I think taste and, and, and appearance, uh, and in some cases, texture is going to be really important for someone that isn't already eating that diet. I think they're going to want to look for, you know, for me, for example, uh, one of the hardest things I, I, I struggle with currently with, uh, the plant bases is on the cheese side. 
Um, I, I'm I'm from the Midwest, Midwest yeah. Ohio. I love cheese, uh, yeah. dairy cheese, and so finding a product that can give me that that taste that I'm looking yes. for and the quality that I'm looking for that I'm used to, uh, I think is going to be important to a lot of people as they look into trying these new plant based products. Awesome, great, great. Uh, I think thank you so much for your insights. I mean, the kind of responses which you have given are uh, are really incredible and. i'm sure these are super valuable for the for the viewers so uh, thank you so much once again for this thank you i appreciate you having me awesome thank you so much wade once again and uh, you have a great day ahead thank you so much thank you you too take care